and then let's go to the south so the south region of the u.s is composed of the following states and uh, it also has a very uh, long it also it also has a long history of immigration because uh, migration accelerated after world war ii and some of the migrants settled in the south okay and the spaniards and the french arrived beginning in the 16th century and then later they moved in louisiana where they became known as creoles or the french settlers in louisiana so they have brought very distinct and interesting culinary uh, influence in in this side of the u.s so the early english colonists brought cattle chickens and pigs they also brought curries and spices as well as wheat oats and other grains and on the other hand african migrants okay they brought peas okra melons eggplant and sesame seeds as well as rice so you can see that uh, the food and culture of the united states is really shaped by hundreds or even probably long history of immigration because of the migrants who chose to settle in the united states okay they also brought with them their famous crops and thus they they form part of the food culture of the united states and corn is also a very extraordinary valuable crop in the south because they consume corn really most of the time uh, which is <clears throat> very much or heavily used in their cooking wherein they make use of grits cornmeal or corn flour right in making their dishes you can they can just fry it they can just bake using corn flour and have it in their meal and other major food stuff so famous food stuff found in the south is in louisiana because it is composed of two unique cuisines distinct from other southern food and as i have mentioned the french uh, migrants settled in Louisiana so they formed this very interesting way of uh, cooking which is the Cajun cuisine and the Creole cuisine the Cajun cuisine is a form of country cooking which is found in the entire state of Louisiana it's created by the French Acadians and it is characterized by the use of what we call the Holy Trinity the Holy Trinity is composed of onions, celery, and bell pepper. And the Pope is called the garlic. As the base of the Cajun cuisine. So because of these ingredients, it bursts with spiciness. Alright, so that is the characteristic of Cajun cuisine. Now, when you... When you settle now in the major city of Louisiana, which is New Orleans, you can now encounter a sophisticated and a rich combination of Spanish, French, Italian, and African food that is called the Creole cuisine. So it's very prominent in the city of New Orleans. So the famous uh, dishes of the Cajun and Creole cooking is jambalaya. A jambalaya is composed of chicken, shrimp, and sausage cooked with rice and vegetables in a zesty sauce. So this one is a jambalaya. So it's really enticing. 
and gumbo, which is a Creole style stew popular in the state of Louisiana, which consists of stock, meat or shellfish, thickener, and the holy trinity of vegetables. And gumbo is considered the state cuisine of Louisiana. And they also have other crops such as the pecan nut, they also have the fig, they have lemon and lime, they have plum, and they also have cantaloupe. They are also rich in seafood such as oysters, mussels, clams, as well as sea bass, sea trout, grouper, flounder, and other varieties of snapper. Chicken, pork, and beef also are prevalent meats, and the country ham is served thin, just like a bacon. And when it comes to beverages, they have two famous uh, alcoholic beverage, which is a Kentucky whiskey, which is Jim Bean, and a Tennessee whiskey, which is Jack Daniels. So, you probably have tried these two famous alcoholic beverages from this region. Now, we go to the southwest, which is composed of the states of California, Southern California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. So, prehistorically, the southwest was settled in by different groups of ancestral Native Americans. So, some of the early people are called the Puebloan people, primarily concentrated in the four corner regions along New Mexico's Rio Grande. And the Puebloan people subsisted on a combination of three basic foods, which is corn, beans, and squash. And the, the, in this region, you can also find the Tex-Mex type of cuisine. So Tex-Mex is consumed in the areas of western and southern Texas, reflecting the culinary adaptations of Mexican-American immigrants. Again, so we are talking about immigrants. So Texan and Mexican, Mexican influence. So you combine it, you form Tex-Mex. So Tex-Mex Cooking is marked by the extensive use of beef, beans, cheese, red chili, cumin, and other red chili sauces. So that is one of the characteristics of a Tex-Mex cuisine. And other characteristics, of course, you can also find corn as part of their staple. And they have different types of corn as well, all right? So they have blue corn, red corn. You have this, the blue. They have the red as well. You have your yellow, you have your white. And you also have the speckled corn. Speckled corn, it has several colors, all right? So it's amazing how some food uh, or some food items or crops are being altered to look like this okay so basically you can alter the genes of any living thing and produce another or a different uh, crop which is what they have successfully done in corn Okay, so they have successfully uh, produced different varieties of corn nowadays. And that type of technology, actually you can also uh, alter the genes of different food crops such as fruits, vegetables, all right? And you can change the color, you can remove the seeds, okay, of the, those fruits so that you will not have to... Uh, take them off before you eat it. So those food items are what we call GMO. Okay, so another trivia question. 
I think this is the last for this video. What is the meaning of GMO when it comes to altering the genes of different food crops? So again, please type in your responses in the comment section of the video. And then we move uh, with their chilies. So chili peppers or the capsicum is also widely used in the Southwest cuisine. So they have kiltipins. This one is a kiltipin. A small wild chili pepper is found between the desert and mountain ranges. They are extremely hot, small red chilies, which were previously used by indigenous populations. And in addition to using chilies as a food spice, Native American women also put hot chili pepper powder on their to initiate winning in their toddlers. So uh, they they make use of <laughs> uh, that ritual so that their toddlers would stop breastfeeding. Okay, <laughs> so that is one of uh, the beliefs of Native Americans before. And one famous meat product or food product in Southwest is what we call jerky. A jerky is usually a meat of large uh, animals such as elk or bison and it is being dried. Okay, and it is normally used in stews or grilled. So this is dried and then spiced and then you can eat it as it is. So that is a jerky. So that is the end of uh, this discussion. Primarily, the United States is, although it's a big country, but a lot of the influences it got from the, the different cuisines, which is uh, found in the U.S. right now, is because of their long history of migration. So migration really plays... Uh, a very important role in how a cuisine of a certain destination will be shaped through the years. And that is exactly what happened to the United States. Also, it still has its distinction when it comes to great American cooking. So that's it for this day's learning session. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Have a good day again and stay safe.